Welcome to Obsidian TTRPGTutorials.com. Let's learn how to use the tool. All right, g'day guys, and welcome back today to another Obsidian video. Today, we're going to have a talk about a very important topic, and that is backups. Okay, Obsidian is a locally installed application. All right, so it's installed on your computer, on one of your hard drives, and that means that there is a risk there that, you know, your hard drive will fail and you could lose your vault. All right, it's not a cloud based application. And if you're a, an 80s or a 90s baby, um, chances are you're used to this, right? Like we never used to have cloud based backups for everything when we were, when we were younger. We had hard drives and we backed those things up. The newer generation coming through, though, they're used to their, um, their applications being web based. Uh, you pay a subscription for everything. That subscription pays for the backups generally, which means you've got, um, you know, you've got some backups in place. So, like if you're using a tool like World Anvil, for example, that's always online. Um, you don't need to worry about backups because they're backing up their servers, right? That's part of the subscription service that you're paying for. But you have to pay the sub, all right? Personally, I don't like paying subs for everything. Um, so I'm very, very happy that Obsidian is a locally installed application. Uh, but it does mean that I have to put a little bit of work in myself to make sure that my data is safe. Now, there's lots of ways you can do this, okay? Personally, I, up until this point, I've been using um, GitHub. Um, at the end of every session, I basically just synchronize my, my vault up to my GitHub. And that means that I've got a, a backed up copy, um, version controlled. It's available online if I want to reference it as well. So that's handy. And I was also using it as a way to synchronize across to uh, other devices. And because I have it as a manual trigger at the end of every session, like I, I, I'm pretty in control of what's going up and what's going down. Um, there's other ways though, like, um, you know, you, you will hear people talk about Obsidian Sync and they're like, oh, I'm backing up with Obsidian Sync. Um, Obsidian Sync is not recommended as a backup solution. All right, I've seen the devs say that. Um, it's basically, it's synchronizing the changes from one PC to another PC. And what that means that if the, the, the files were to change on one PC and that was a problematic change, like a, an issue, then that issue would be replicated across to the other machine as well. There are version controlled backups uh, available though in sync, right? So there's version controls of every file. So technically if you did something really bad, you could restore, but it's not a true backup, all right? Same thing with stuff like um, Google Drive and um, OneDrive and stuff like that, right? They're, they're synchronizing, all right? So they're, as the changes happen, they're keeping a backup. What we're talking about here is a, a pure backup, like a, an actual copy of your vault that's put somewhere else in case of emergency. Okay, so let's say the situation occurs where my computer dies, the hard drive's fried, and I've got four years of work in my vault at this time. I don't want to lose it. How do I get that back? Of course, I just go to GitHub and I get, get it back. I've got a copy, right? But what we're going to talk about today is a new plugin that's actually making localized backups quite easy. Now, the, the plugin is called Local Backup. All right, and it does what it says on the box, right? It just creates a copy of your vault, stores it in another location, so that if something happens, you've got a copy. Now, I wouldn't put your local copy on the same hard drive, okay? Because if the hard drive fails, then you lose both your copy and your backup. Um, but I'd put it on another hard drive, so that way you've got two hard drives, let's say in this situation, that way you've got a, a local backup in case you need to restore. All right, so let's jump in. Let's have a look and see how this thing works. All right, so first things first, let's do the install and setup. So we're gonna go down to settings. We're gonna to come to community plugins. We're going to do a browse and we're gonna type local backup. All right, here we can see it's by GC Chen. Now it's been updated seven months ago. I'm seeing a few people start to use this around the place and uh, it seems to be a great solution. Um, as with all things, all backups, always read the README. All right, go through and check out the README. It's got instructions on how to use it, tells it what it can be do, what, the, what it can do. Um, I always like to check the, uh, the GitHub as well though, just to have a bit of a peek under the hood and see what's going on. We got 17 issues, all right. Are they relatively new? Look, some of them are some pretty old ones here. All right, so it might be one just to watch, you know, like there's, there's 17 open, 22 closed. Always keep an eye on the issues, guys, because there are plugins that get abandoned. All right, and if the plugin gets abandoned, it means you can be yeah, in a tight spot. But I've heard good things about this one, so we're going to jump in and have a look. We've got the install. 
where you've done the enable, as you can see. So we've got the options button. All right, you might have the install and then you need to hit the enable. We're going to go into options. All right, and here we get to configure it how we like. So show ribbon icon. Shows a ribbon icon in the left sidebar. I've got that enabled. All right, let's just have a look at that. We've got a little icon down here that says run local backup. All right, if we click that, it actually runs the local backup. I probably shouldn't have pressed that, guys. All right. My, my vault's 10 gig. It's going to take a while. I had it ready for the video. Oh, well. <laughs> we'll get back into settings. All right, we're back where we were. Uh, backup once on startup. All right, run local backup once on Obsidian starts. I'm going to do that. I like the idea of that. And we were talking about this in the, the Discord today with some of the guys who use this. And there's a conversation here about how often you should back up. All right, we've got the backup history length days. So how many backups should you keep? Um, the more you keep, the more space on your hard drive you're going to take. My vault's 10 gig. All right, so if I have three copies that I've kept, that's 30 gig. All right, if I lose, use infinite, I'm very quickly not going to have any space left on my hard drive. So set this according to what you've got. How many backups per day? All right, how many, specify the number of backups per day to keep. And we got three. I'm only going to probably need one. And the reasoning being, my vault's about four years old. It's quite mature. I don't make barely any changes to it, if I'm honest, other than prep a new session, and that's about it. So there's not a lot for me to lose if I do have an issue. So I, one day worth of backups is good for me. Where do we want it to back up to? All right, now, I've got mine. Oh, this is a bit big. I've got mine coming into my D drive. Okay, so D drive, Obsidian backups, and then in here, it's basically creating a copy. And as you can see, I got a 9.382 gig file there. That's the, the first backup I did. So this is where you put the folder path. Now that's easy. I literally just um, browsed to it in Windows. I right clicked and get copy addresses text, and then I pasted that in here. All right, that's easy. Um, for Linux and Mac, you just put it down here instead of the Windows, which goes up here. Uh, the file name, you can change this if you, you like. All right, you can see it's got a bit of a template here. And obviously what that's doing is that's creating this name. So I, I just left it as the default. All right, it's my vault name, dash backup, the year, the month, the day. All right, and the time by the looks of it. All right, so I can tell which one's the most recent. Interval backups, enable the, to create backups at regular intervals. I haven't turned that on. All right, but I don't need a backup every 10 minutes. All right, I do not need that at 10 gig backup. That would very quickly take out away all of my available space. So I've left that section turned off. All right, backup by calling external file, file archiver. All right, so I've turned this on. I use 7-zip, which is a, an open source freeware um, zip tool. Uh, you could use WinRAR. There's BandyZip there support as well. So, but I've got 7-zip. So I've got that installed. All right, and then all I've done is I've basically gone to 7-zip. Now, 7-zip is on my C drive, under program files, under 7-zip. I saw it by name. There it is, 7-zip. All right, 7z.exe is the one that needs to run. It was actually included um, as an example here. All right, so D software 7-zip, 7z.exe. So I know what to link to. So I just found the location. And I copied that in with the exec executable on the end. That's quite easy. And now it uses that when it's doing the zip process. All right, and that's it. We're set up. All right, I can close that out. And now I've set it up so when I start my vault, it's going to take a backup. But we do have the button down here. All right, now I've already pressed that through this video, so you're going to see that. But if I press Control Shift I, all right, you can actually see what's going going on. All right, so. It's sending a command to 7-zip in this case here and saying, create me a backup. Once it's finished, it pops up and says, file created by 7-zip successfully. All right, and now I'm basically just uh, got some other stuff going on here. You can see it's got a, uh, a bit of an internal script where it's basically checking to make sure you're meeting those rules, right? How many backups it keeps per day. Um, and really, all it's doing is just taking a copy of your vault, zipping it up, and putting it in here. Now, that one's still running. You can see that's gonna take a while. This one's finished though, all right? So if I double click on this, it's literally just opens up in my 7-zip application. 
you can see that I've got my, uh, my folder here, which is my vault. So this is my backup. If I lost my hard drive, my C drive, that's got my Obsidian on it, I could quite easily come to my D drive, all right, take a copy of this, drag it into a new hard drive and create a vault from that. And that will be a perfectly acceptable backup. All right, nice and easy. It's just a quite simple price, right? So now it's it's 10 gigs. So I'm not going to do it, all right? Because it's going to take a while. But literally, all you would need to do is drag that into another folder where you want to have it. And then from Obsidian, when you're restoring from your backup, we'll close this. We'd come down here to the vault button, go manage vaults. And we would go open folder as vault. And you would just literally browse to the folder. Okay, that's it. It's all there is to it. Just creates a new backup. Now, how often you back these up is up to you. Okay, have a think about your personal situation, how many hard drives you have, where you want them, want to have them. As you can see, I've got three hard drives and a G drive. All right. So I'm going to, I've got my Obsidian Vault on here. I shouldn't because of, you know, I just don't have any space left. I need to need to sort that out. But my Obsidian is here. I'm backing up to here. All right. That way I've got two copies. I've got my, my workable copy and I've got my backup. They're on two separate pieces of hardware. Um, that way, if one dies, I've still got the other. All right. If that one dies, I've still got that one and no issues. All right. So you can go down that path. All right. So through the creation of this video, it got me thinking about, well, I've got a local backup, but what if my computer died completely? Could I also integrate this in a way with online backups? So I thought we'd open up my play um, PF2E vault, which is the, my primary vault these days. We're just going to quickly install the plugin again and do a full check of this. So we'll do the install, we'll do the enable, quickly configure it. But what I'm going to do this time is when I back it up, I'm going to try output to my Google Drive. Back up once on startup. Yep, I'm going to keep three, keep three. Um, and I just want to copy the settings over for the zip drive. All right, we'll do that. All right, so that's configured. So now I've basically set up the plugin, right? In three seconds, that's all it takes. Um, with my Pathfinder Vault, and now I want to check to see if it's going to work with, um, with my Google Drive. I'm going to check it by actually making sure it works on reload. So I'm going to do a reload app without saving. There we go. It's resetting. And ideally, we should see it trigger. Right? Because if it triggers uh, on Vault Startup, we should see it trigger somehow. And then ideally, the backup will start going to my Google Drive. Now, the benefit of this, obviously, is that once it's basically on my Google Drive, my Google Drive will then synchronize the vault to the cloud backup. All right. And then what that means is I've got a copy on my computer. All right. I've got a copy on my Google Drive. The Google Drive is backed up by Google. All right. With proper infrastructure, which means it's going to be nice and safe. Just doing a control shift I. There's all sorts of errors as it's passing through some of my other stuff. But here we go. We can see the backup has begin, begun. All right, so it's coming through. It's going onto my Google Drive. There we go. It's two gig, it's growing. It's a big vault. I don't know how big this one is actually. If I double click on it, it says it's in use. It's not finished. All right. But if I double click on it and it opens in 7-zip, um, you know, that's a, a really good indication that it's finished. Um, but yeah, it looks like this works. So it's basically storing to my Obsidian backup folder in my Google Drive. Yeah, there we go. It's done. 
So that's fantastic, right? It means that Google Drive is now going to take a backup of that. That will synchronize to my Google Drive, which means I have a local and a, uh, a backup cloud copy of this work as well, just for pure you know, safety, right? Because let's say my, my computer room caught on fire, God forbid, let's, not, let's hope that doesn't happen. But if it did, both hard drives would be destroyed and therefore I would lose that computer, all right? You'll hear companies say they have an offsite backup and that's quite literally where they take a backup of a computer and they take it to a whole other building, right? So that that way, if one building is destroyed, you've still got a backup in another building. That's that's common, uh, common sense backup approach. Um, but all right, looks like this is working. So that's another option as well. And again, if I wanted to literally create a, a copy of this from somewhere, just to show you the actual process, all right, I would open up that uh, that file. We'd go to wherever my backups are happening, which is here. We would open that um, in this case here. I mean, I could do it with 7-zip, but 7-zip supported by uh, Windows zip at this point. Oh, it's actually a zip file. We're just going to grab this from internally. All right, we're going to take that to... Oh, let's just go into my backup folder. I'm just copying it, all right, which basically extracts it from the zip file and puts a copy directly onto another hard drive. All right, so while that's going, we're going to prepare. We're going to come back over to Obsidian. All right, we've already got this running. So we're going to go open folder as vault. Click open. We're going to go to where we put it. We put it on the D drive, Obsidian, Obsidian PF2E vault. All right, then we're going to select that file folder now. I should just wait for this to finish before we do that. All right, so the extract's complete. Um, it's basically, it's extracted it into here. I'm just gonna rename this to, to backup just so that I know that that's the one. And now I can basically select my folder, right, from over here. Um, and we just go select folder. And now that creates a new vault. Now, because it's a backup of the entire thing, I'm gonna go trust author and enable plugins. Those plugins are all included with this vault. All right, you can see it's indexing right now. It should come with the theme. It should come with the plugins. Everything is going to turn on just the way it was. All right, and that's a, a really beneficial part of this. Now, this is, it's gonna take a while to index all of my notes and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, 10, 15 minutes and I'm back up where exactly I was. All right, so there we go. Um, as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty simple process. All right, fantastic little plugin. I, I think this is a really good one. Um, again, it is called Local Backup by GC Chen. All right, so go and check it out. Uh, he does have a donate link here if you'd like to send him some coffee or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, I think the, the really important takeaway, all right, even if you don't use this plugin, even if you go with a completely different uh, method for backing up your vault. You should absolutely have a backup, okay? It's it's just not a good idea to just have one copy of your vault. So go and get yourself a backup. Make sure it's there because we have seen people in the uh, Obsidian TTRPG Discord who've come along and said, oh, my computer's just died. I've just lost everything. What do I do? All right, if you've got backups, you don't have to worry about it. All right, so there we go. That's been Local Backup. Um, we'll leave it there. All right. So thanks for listening. Hope you've enjoyed that content. Um, if you are new to the community, please do jump over here to obsidian TTRPG tutorials.com. I recommend this over just going through my YouTube videos because it's all laid out in a nice way. Start with getting started, move to plugin tutorials, only learn what you need to do guys. Um, I've been getting told I've got 99 videos, so this will make 100. There we go. Um, you don't need to watch all 100, only watch what you need. Okay, that's it. But do come along, click this button here, jump into the Discord, all right? The Obsidian TTRPG Community Discord is where we're all hiding. If you wanna learn more about how to use Obsidian, that's the place to do it. Jump in there and chat. Got an issue, jump in there and post the issue. There's lots and lots of people outside of just myself who could help you get along with that. Anyway, guys, enjoy your day. I'll speak to you on the socials. Thank you.